John Wedger, Pants Women Against Depression, South Coast of England, probably the hottest day of the year. Um, absolutely glorious. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. It's tropical. Let's see if we can uh, see anything underwater. There you are. swim out so it's uh, a little bit windy you can see the uh, Isle of Wight over there Portsmouth over there uh, we're in the uh, English Channel the Atlantic it is absolutely beautiful I cannot stress how gorgeous it is um, quite a lot of people on, on the beach quite a lot of people using the water which is good really good to see um, busy not many people pants swimming which is a shame uh, used to be like an old school thing get out and swim so today's video is dedicated to depression and suicidal tendencies and a combat against it um, regarding those who have served in, in Her Majesty's forces in, or her, what do you say, His Majesty's forces, no, isn't it? Old uh, Sausage Fingers forces. So, and it's, this has come after quite a few requests, really, by ex servicemen um, calling out for a bit of guidance and their help because they're suffering, not just with depression, but with suicidal tendencies. And, um, I'm not going to name any names, but a very close friend of mine who I served in the police with, uh, ex-military guy, and, uh, and had seen uh, active service. And he was saying that some of the trauma from that still haunts him. And uh, he went on to explain that in, in the unit he was in, that did see active service, um, Three of them in the in the past few years have committed suicide, and it was only a small unit. And he himself is in a grip of suicidal tendencies, and it's it was a very upsetting meeting to have with this what I used to call a very stoic individual, really nice guy, a good friend, a good colleague, and a lovely guy with a great sense of humour. And the depression came in. And along with that, the suicidal tendencies, and it, it was a very upsetting meeting. And uh, he sort of has uh, called out in many ways. And um, I think we can all help each other in this. And the main thing is, is talking about it. And the, the one thing I've noticed with the ex forces guys, it's very similar with, with the police, was the banter and the camaraderie. Banter is something that is really frowned on in society now. I actually know people that are anti-banter, which is, which is really annoying and sad, and I think they're quite sad. Um, why would someone not want to engage in banter? Because banter's, it's incredibly brilliant. It's, it's funny, it's, uh, it's comedy. Um, and when you're in some of these sort of macho environments, tough environments, the banter can be very raw, but it's at the same time, it's fun and uh, I always loved the banter in the police and that many times I was the centre of it and I used to get the, the piss ripped out of me and uh, I used to love it and, um, and I used to love it when it was done to other people and uh, I don't think anyone ever suffered depression as a result of it and, you know I might be wrong um, but it seems to have like a healing effect at the same time it's a way of addressing problems and the other thing was going for a drink, the whole team, the relief, the unit, whatever you was in, all go for a drink. And you could, in, in, the, in the rawest forms, discuss the day's events, which some of it could be quite horrific and, and sort of experiences you wouldn't get in any other working environment. And to not discuss that and to take that home, some of the brutality and the trauma that you experience and to take that home with, with no uh, release valve, it's going to have a horrendous 
pressure cooker effect. And it's like someone once said, it's like if you don't deal with a trauma, it's like as you go through life, each each year putting a, a rock in in a sort of backpack uh, which you carry around, and that's your trauma. That's an analogy to your trauma. And each year you're suppressing it, you're adding to it, you know, you're compounding it. And in the end, you're going to keel over. It's going to take you back. The pressure of it's going to take you back. The metaphorical pressure that is not the actual stones in your backpack. And uh, that's why there is a need to discuss things. And sometimes it's got to be done in a blokey way. And I think today there is uh, there is an attack on both masculinity and femininity. Um, what we're seeing, especially with this. LGP, GTQ, plus, double eight, and everything else. Uh, which, which, again, I don't want to get into that argument. I'm not in agreement with it. I'm, I'm very much of the blue. There are only two genders, um, and I don't understand why people refer to themselves in the plural. It, 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 uh, I think that's quite odd. But uh, that aside, I don't want to get caught up in all that. But um, there seems to be a need to demasculate men. You know, feminise men. And at the same time, take away from women what is feminine. And uh, I think this is incredibly dangerous. And I just think that we're, we're only just going to start seeing the, the, the negative fruits of all that. So, you know, this is a call out to all the ex-coppers, ex-servicemen that are suffering from depression and are seeking solace in the wrong place, whether it be at the bottom of a bottle uh, at the end of a line of cocaine, um, whatever it might be, even violence, domestic violence, you know, stop it. It's a wrong thing to do. And this is definitely an incredibly cathartic healing, mindfulness, oh, back to source, organic, peaceful, tranquil. I don't know, well it is soothing way to, to heal some of their most sharp, deep, cutting wounds that trauma has given people, whether it be through their upbringing, through their job, a mixture of both, and also I call out to all those that have endured domestic violence, at the hands of cruel, sadistic and puerile perpetrators. You know, you too are suffering greatly. And I've spoken to quite a few in recent times and, and in my policing career that, that people have gone through that. And uh, those that commit um, uh, DV, domestic violence, are, are selfish, cruel, and damaged individuals. They really are. To do that to someone else, in my opinion, is akin to child abuse because you're exerting total control and pain over those which you deem less good. Let's uh, uh, income in. All right? Yeah, good, good. Uh, there we go. Then we got took out by a paddle border. Uh, anyway, didn't see me, I never know. Stupid man. Anyway, so this is to uh, uh, all the ex-servicemen out there. Um, pants women against depression, it does work. Um, you know, let's see if we can sort something out. Get a group of guys suffering and let's meet up one day, one, one morning a week and let's get swimming in, in my little lake as I call it. Let's get meet up, let's get swimming. Let's put our progress, let's put our mental health, our physical well-being. Uh, let's video record it and let's do a whole year let's be a band of brothers do a whole year get in there stay alive stay fit stay healthy and be a testimony that we can all help each other and that suicide is not an option okay so calling out I've got one guy um, ex Scotty who's gonna meet me in a lake and we're gonna do he doesn't swim too good but that's not an issue like I said before you don't have to be a good swimmer to do the open water sea stuff yes without doubt but uh, in a lake no you don't no you don't Probably.
let's do it. Come on, let's do it. Let's get someone suffering. Send them my way. J O N W E D G E R Foundation at gmail.com. Email me. Let's meet up. Strip to the pants. Get in that lake. Video it in a non perverted way. And uh, let's. Uh, Let's cure that depression and let's banish them suicidal tendencies. So, um, right, let's swim. Let's swim to the Isle of Wight. I reckon it'll take me about 12 hours, but let's do it. All right, this is absolutely stunning. This is beautiful. Oh, this is an hour and a half from London. How fantastic. <laughs>